what's the first thing you think of when somebody asks you about General Electric? GVOs, 44 ton switchers, toasters, refrigerators, AC 6000 CWs, U boats, Dash 8s, the UM 20. Wait, 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 wait. What's that last one? General Electric is not known for their streamlined locomotives because they were all about creating strong locomotives for railroads worldwide, including countries like Indonesia, the Philippines, Brazil, New Zealand, and even South Africa. Most of them exist in America, however. GE is still creating strong locomotives today with their newest locomotives being a part of their Evolution series, or GVOs. These days, they're the most common locomotives you'll find on mainline freight trains. However, reverting back to the streamliner, multiple manufacturers tried making successful streamliners, and surprisingly, General Electric had a go at it too. In 1954, they built the UM20B. Some say they were the pioneers of the popular Universal series, and they're technically right, as they were the first to be built with the U name. The next one after that was the GEU9B, built in 1957 for Brazil's freight carriers. These locomotives had a more rectangular streaming style. They still looked like F units, but just more square. A similar style to this was applied to a locomotive class down under, the New South Wales 43 class built sometime in 1956. Only six were built, but one surprisingly still stands today in on static display. The UM20s never really saw revenue service, however, as most of their life was exclusively for testing on many rail lines belonging to two railroads, Union Pacific and Erie. They were tested a bunch of times on the Erie's main line between 1954 and 59. After that, they were sent back to GE to be rebuilt with new 8-cylinder prime movers. With their prime movers rebuilt, they went to be tested on Union Pacific-owned tracks. It's unknown what the crews thought of these locomotives, but some sources say that they rode horribly and the cab was very complex to work with. In other words, they weren't too popular with the crews. Unfortunately though, the UM20s were pulled off the Union Pacific's roster in 1963 and they were all sent for scrap. None of the four units that were built survived the cutter's torch. Today, one GE locomotive class that can technically still count as a streamliner survives on the White Pass and Yukon Narrow Gauge Railroad in Alaska. They're classed as GEX 3341s, and they haul passenger and freight excursions on the scenic route through the Alaskan mountain range. The UM20s technically paved the way for the entire Universal Series lineup which is still widely popular by rail fans, but were especially popular with the railroads during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Some still survive today in running conditions on short lines and tourist railroads. Thanks for watching this quick video on something you likely never heard of. I'm sorry about the short length as there were very limited sources on these locomotives history. Hopefully you were fascinated. If you were, my pleasure. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.